Hey guys, Rolf from Simple Wi-Fi, and in this video we're going to cover some cellular high gain antennas. So typically on this channel we cover Wi-Fi, Simple Wi-Fi, right? So you would expect to see Wi-Fi antennas. However, this time uh, we're going to be using cellular high gain antennas to create a Wi-Fi network. If you've got a Nighthawk M1, MoFi, PepWave, or any kind of cellular modem, these things require a cellular connection in order to uh, be your ISP to then provide Wi-Fi to everything else connected to it. So today we're going to be covering how to get better throughput, better range, and better overall, overall better performance uh, through these cellular modems using high gain directional wideband antennas. So these antennas are also part of the Simple Wi-Fi family. Uh, Simple Wi-Fi is an antenna manufacturer from Miami and we've got a new brand called Technical Antennas. Uh, we design things like this, or we build them, uh, we manufacture them right here in the States and we supply a lot of uh, amplifier manufacturers or even resellers. So the stuff that you see from here from us uh, is coming from the same Simple Wi-Fi uh, warehouse and lab and all, all the engineering that goes behind it uh, is our own so you get the same great performance out of the cellular antennas as you enjoy with our wi-fi ones so for this video since we're doing a cellular connection to a cellular modem i had to get very far away from the cell towers right out in the middle of the everglades in order to really see the performance and benefit of these high gain antennas if i'm in a rural environment so if i did this back at the warehouse uh, i can get excellent signal just about anywhere if you're using a directional antenna, go with a lower gain directional in a rural environment as opposed to the one that still comes in here. Uh, if you can get the antenna outside, run cable inside, you're going to be better off. And then on top of that, uh, you're going to get better speeds on your connection. So if even if you're in a rural environment, I mean, I'm sorry, an urban, an urban environment, it helps to have these directional antennas because you get a better, what I like to call, highway to the tower. Out in the middle of nowhere, uh, directional antennas can really help to just you can just get a signal overall right now my phone doesn't have any signal and I hope that as we go through this video I'll be able to connect to the internet using one of these so just to go over some of the antennas I have with me today uh, I have three cellular wideband antennas now these are called wideband because they cover a large part of the cellular spectrum they go from 6 and 700 all the way up to 2200 megahertz as opposed to Wi-Fi, which is on 24 or 2.4 gigahertz. The problem with wideband antennas is that they're doing too many frequencies at once to be very good at one. So if you're looking for a specific frequency, it's better to get an, an antenna that's tuned and optimized for that frequency to get the most possible gain and performance out of that frequency. When you start adding more and more usage to an antenna where you expect more frequencies to be covered, the antenna performance is going to degrade. So keep that in mind when you're searching for a directional, a directional cellular antenna. If you know you need AT&T only for LTE band, then get an antenna that works on that band. Having wide band antennas is very convenient, but there is that trade-off that you have to keep in mind. So when it comes to the different kinds of wideband antennas, the most popular that you see most often is the 8 dBi uh, log periodic. Now I want to say 8 dBi with caution. Since this is a wideband, it actually varies depending on which frequency you want to talk about. The average uh, gain out of this antenna is 8 dBi. It could actually go all the way up to 10 dBi for the higher band. So the higher frequency uh, bands are going to have higher gain but the lower frequency bands are gonna be as low as 6 dBi, so the average is eight. This one goes from eight on the low bands all the way up to 14 on the high bands, so we say the average is about 12. And this is an LP12, log periodic 12, LP8, log periodic eight. Now this antenna might be familiar to a lot of you because it looks like our G24, our grid 24 dBi Wi-Fi. However, we redesigned and have a patent now on this feed horn that's gonna use the reflector from the, from the grid 24 in order to amplify the signal. And basically this is still wide band, but because of our design, 
We wanted this to be kind of future proof as, as much as we could. This goes from 600 megahertz all the way up to 6.5 gigahertz, so 6,500 megahertz continuously. So this does Wi-Fi on both 2.4 and 5, but since this is a cellular modem conversation, this does, uh, of course, the cell bands at a huge optimal gain, an average of 24 dBi. So on the lower bands, we're getting about 15, 16 dBi, and on the upper bands, we're getting almost to 27, 28 dBi. So huge, huge performance increase on this antenna. And this even has adjustable uh, knobs here where you can push the feed horn in and out depending on which band you want to optimize. So if you want to get higher gain on the lower band, so the LTE band, you would bring this out because it's a bigger frequency so that it can reflect more on, on the metal dish. If you push it in to the smaller frequencies, you're going to optimize for even more gain on the upper part of the spectrum. And if you leave it in the middle, it averages all throughout. So aiming these things can be tricky and they take a little time and patience, but uh, the reward is worth it. You're gonna get a much better signal as we've talked about always. Directional antennas work a lot better at boosting the signal. When you're talking about the 8 dBi, so this smaller antenna, this has a radiation cone of about 60 to 50 degrees. The next step up, has about 40 to 30 degrees. And with this one, we're talking between 20 all the way up to four and three degrees. So very, very directional. If you're gonna just use this to point and aim, you have to be very, very patient because any deviation left and right by a few inches, you lose the tower. So for that, we actually have a sure call signal meter that I can hone in and talk uh, or look at which, which signal I wanna talk on and it'll tell me the signal strength as I move that around. So let's jump into that. So just to cover what the SureCall signal analyzer is, it's actually a spectrum analyzer. It's using a signal coming in from an antenna and telling you what the power is. So it's really good for finding cell towers because you can hone in on the specific carrier that you wanna look for or a specific band and then aim it and you can see how the signal changes based on when you aim in certain directions. If you aim here, it's good or bad and so forth. So uh, this is a great little handy tool for finding cell towers. If you are a mobile user and you, you're finding, you need to find cell towers a lot, this makes your life really easy because you don't need to uh, do speed tests every time you re-aim uh, re the antenna uh, in order to find your, your best tower for that cellular connection. You can just Look at the signal and it's in real time. It's gonna tell you if it's good or bad and how it's improving based on where you aim. So these, uh, this device comes with a little omnidirectional, uh, which is okay. It's not the way I would always do it, uh, but it's a good reference point just to see what the ambient signal is. Uh, I've actually used a 10 foot L240 cable and I'm plugging it into the back of these different antennas uh, over over coax and that'll tell me uh, what we what signal I've got so let's go one more thing uh, if you have the luxury of having different varying gain antennas so a lower gain and then uh, medium gain high gain like I have today uh, it's really nice to use uh, the lower gain antenna first because uh, it's a wider uh, radiation pattern so it kind of tells you in this general direction and then you can use the higher gain antennas to hone in on that specific point. And that's the way I'm gonna do this today. Okay, so the first pass around, uh, I was getting about, I'm looking for the LTE AT&T band, since this is an M1 Nighthawk on AT&T. Uh, this general direction, which is actually south, I wasn't expecting this, uh, is the best increase as I spin around. So I'm spinning around, I'm getting about NEG 95, NEG 90, uh, NEG 100, depending on like around, like. Uh, to the northwest uh, and those are all terrible signals so once you're around neg 90 you're talking about 
one and even zero bars. Uh, as I point it this way, it drops to about negative 95. So, uh, I'm sorry, neg 85, which tells me that the signal is improving this way. I've got a wide radiation, radiation pattern on this uh, 8 dBi, so now we're gonna take it up to the 12 dBi. Okay, so I've got our 12 dBi antenna plugged in, and I'm already seeing a huge improvement because luckily they were on the same pole and they were spinning together. I'm actually getting close to minus 82 already. Uh, so as opposed to 8 dB, uh, the 8 dBi average antenna down to the 12 dBi average antenna, uh, we're actually getting about an improvement about five or six dB, which is about in line with what you would see. So when you add gain uh, on your antenna, you're adding gain to the entire system. So uh, that's what we're seeing here. We added more gain and now we're gaining from minus 87 to about 85 and 84 uh, holding pretty steady around there so uh, safe to say let me see if I can point around a little bit better okay I'm losing it yeah so uh, we're gonna jump right into the big boy and see if we can hone in on that tower specifically all right, so you can see uh, on the analyzer, trying to focus there. All right, so I'm doing an average of the entire LTE band, and it's bouncing between the different parts of the band on minus 91 all the way down to about 86 sometimes. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a pretty, really weak signal. Uh, so we're going to try to improve that. Okay, so I've just plugged it in, turned it on, and configured it to look for the LTE band that I was showing you before. And as you can see, signal is pretty weak still. So minus 95, it got worse, right? So this is a very directional antenna, which means that we need to be right on the tower in, in order for it to work. I gotta switch out the tripods. Okay, second attempt. Okay. Holding steady at 82, 83, 84. So we're, we're getting closer. <clears throat> Just to show how slight of a movement I lost the tower. 99, 97, 98, and I only moved it a few inches. Just not getting the signal I want. Let me try something else. Okay, so I have changed plans. Uh, we're gonna target a different tower that I found going north, and we're gonna increase the signal for the cellular band on 800. So as you can see where it's pointing right now, uh, I'm getting a great signal, better, not great, but good enough signal compared to what I've been getting out here. Uh, minus 78 so remember as that number gets closer to zero the better and just to for reference I'm going to point it in another direction so now the antenna is pointing a different way and see if I can get that in focus minus 90 86 
I'm gonna point it back at the tower. Oh, and uh, I had to put it up on the, the table that I brought. Elevation. All right, so there I've got it pointing at the tower. And I'm holding about 76 dB. So on about a prove, an improvement of about two to three bars. Uh, just from pointing at the tower. So let's get this hooked up to the Nighthawk and get on the internet. All right, so I've got my second antenna up. Uh, now let's aim it. All right. Neg 74 on the second antenna. So I'll take a quick moment to finally address uh, why these antennas are what's called cross polarized. So when you cross polarize, you're better in line with the cell towers. So for pure cell signal on a cell booster, uh, like if you were just trying to use one of the sure call amps, for example, or the amplifiers from Wilson, you would just leave it horizontal. Uh, but for throughput, uh, we found, and just reading around the web, you find over and over again, that when you cross polarize a MIMO device, so all of these devices are MIMO, cross polarization almost doubles your bandwidth. So cross polarize, all the brackets allow you to cross make the, the mounting. So use that to your advantage and you'll see a grave improvement. That's why these antennas have been crooked the entire time. Okay, so I just finished a live stream uh, once I finally got on the internet through the hotspot. And then during the live stream, I decided to swap everything out, as you saw, and basically lost connection. So let me explain what happened. On the big boys, I am getting about negative 70, 75, okay? And what that basically equates to is about, oops. That equates about three to four bars. So uh, my download speeds, 15 meg down, two up, and that's because I was live streaming. I think that even then the megs are, the uploads are still gonna be pretty slow. But uh, I punched in the ATBI right now, and on the same mode, I'm getting minus negative 90, almost 100. It's pretty bad, right? So that makes sense why I would lose connection. Uh, up top, minus 70. Down below on this one, minus 99, minus 100. I mean, even if I aim it around, it doesn't get any better. So that just goes to show gain is always better. <laughs> Let me try on the LP12. All right, so testing the 800 megahertz band with an LP12 DBI, which is the bigger one. So I'm gonna just point it in the same general direction Minus 85, 83, and then that's just negative 110. So that's the wrong way for the tower, but. Now it just goes to show how a slight deviation with a directional antenna can kill your signal to the tower. And then of course how important gain is. So minus 100 on the LP8, minus 85 on this one, minus 77 on the big one. And that's why I was able to live stream before. All right, so to wrap up this video, I actually drove uh, back towards the highway and I was able to find the tower that I was connected to. So uh, that tower right there is 
got Verizon, AT&T, and both of those bands are carriers are pushing the 800 band. So you can see if I use my directional again, and I've got, let's see if you can see it, uh, Verizon, AT&T, pointing right at the tower max gain which is minus 40 db so that is like full full bar screaming uh, if I switch it over to the 800 block so that's a little sorry for the reflection there we go so I got max gain pointing right at that tower if I point it away it drops to minus 60 minus 62 70 uh, but if I point it right back at the tower it maxes out so I'll show you what the distance was between this tower and where it was uh, just to sum it up uh, the LP8 barely any usable bandwidth through the MiFi or through the hotspot uh, for the M1 with this one I was getting five or six meg down and of course we saw on, on the live stream with the uh, big high gain parabolic uh, we were doing about 15 to 20 down. Uh, the upload speed was being used up by the live stream, but when I took it off, it was about four to five up. Definitely, definitely better than nothing. <laughs> and uh, for being so far away from the tower, it just proves that gain is your best friend. But then you gotta be patient and aim it right at the tower. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact us at support at simplewifi.com. You can leave a comment down below. I answer every single one. And I'll see you in the next one.